What's going on guys? 2022 is finally upon us. Now I think it's safe to say that most of us have had a pretty wild and crazy two years. And in that wild and crazy two years, we've learned some lessons. But one of those lessons needs to be that New Year's resolutions are a myth that needs to go away. So we took a lot of our time reading different articles, reading books, and most importantly, making a bunch of mistakes ourselves so that we could tell you 22 pieces of advice you need to know for your life going into 2022. So if you need some advice in your life, please hit that like button and let's get into it. Point number one, every day is a pie made of 24 slices. Now who or what you give those slices to is completely up to you, but make sure it's intentional. Every single brand, social media star, shopping site, Netflix is all demanding the biggest slice that they possibly can get of your time. And that's just on the digital side. This is Web 2.0 guys, we haven't even entered Web 3.0 yet. Now on the other side, in real life, there's family, friends, cousins. Now that's also taking up time on your pie chart. Now between those two things and even me time, I see way too many people have no idea how they want their pie slice to be distributed. Hey man, did you get the 30th meme I sent you about that celebrity news that I know you don't care about, but I might care about, so I wanted to talk to you about it. Hey man, I respect you as a person and I want you to live a good life, but you're eating too many of my pie slices. All right, well, I guess I'll send them to Andrew. Andrew. Point number two, when investing, it's best to understand the macro environment, AKA the overall market trends. So we've talked about how important it is to start investing your money on our channel before. However, you gotta know the overall market trends because that's going to affect how effective your strategies are. For example, remember about a year ago, the entire market was going up and everybody was making money and everybody felt like a genius. It almost felt like you couldn't go wrong. And then the market started chopping sideways and a lot of people at the beginner skill level, such as myself, stop day trading. So to find out what the macro trends are, you're gonna have to look on financial sites, read a lot of articles, and even talk to your finance friends who might have some insight. And point number three, make sure you get the proper tools you need to protect yourself, and particularly in this case, your information and your finance. And definitely have your go-to VPN that you use all the time. Which brings us to today's sponsor, Surfshark. If you're looking for a VPN that will protect your information and give you a 30-day money-back guarantee, and also give you four months free when you sign up using our code FUNGROS, then to be honest, I think Surfshark is like a no-brainer. Why do you need a VPN anyways? Well, one, it keeps your data safe when you're on unsecure networks. City Wi-Fi, random cafes, use it to protect against hackers, which do exist. Two, you can access blocked content in other countries. So if I set my VPN for the UK, I can watch Netflix UK shows. Global content is limitless. Three, I've been using Surfshark lately because you need a VPN to access certain cryptocurrency exchanges that are based outside of the country. So I turn on my Surfshark to access Binance international listen the more time you spend on the internet the more protection you need so get surfshark vpn at the link down below use the code fungros for 83 percent off and four extra months for free now back to the video for more advice point number four you will get paid on what the marketplace wants and not what you know or like elon musk said that you get paid in direct proportion to the difficulty of the problems that you solve basically guys we all have things that we're passionate about more than our friends more than our families things that we just want to get into a 10 out of 10 level of depth about and that's great however you cannot always demand to be heavily monetarily compensated for that knowledge unless it's something that the marketplace wants over the years I've met people who wanted to make a living off doing you know revolutionary spoken word from the perspective of a bird now that is great if that brings that person happiness peace fulfillment that is amazing however that artist should also not feel entitled to getting rich off that type of content for example guys I've been trying to get a book published and my book agent was telling me that there is a way for people to relate to people completely unlike them for example the plight of the Native Americans if they write it in a certain way. But usually those type of crossover titles from an extremely niche topic to a very broad audience, it was done with extreme skill and care by the author. I always come back to judo and jujitsu and just flipping something that seems one way to the other. Your niche thing still potentially could work, but if you don't have that super elite flipping skill, it might not. Point number five, if you're an ambitious person, find a way to outsource those menial tasks that you don't like to do to someone else who's like a professional at it. Of course, outsourcing costs you money, but with that extra time that you save, you're gonna be able to put that towards your goals and aspirations and your career. Uh, hey, Andrew, do you wanna go wash the car for two hours? And then maybe we can go cook something that'll take two hours. And then maybe one of the scooters kinda has a flat so we can learn for on YouTube for like four or five hours how to fix it and then spend another two getting it all done. 
Dude, with the help of professionals, we can get that done in half an hour. Look guys, I know some people cook for the hobby of it, but literally if you're doing it for the money reason, you have to understand there is a lot of time costs and cleaning costs in the preparation of the potatoes, of the cleaning of the potato skins. I'm trying to put some money in Auntie's pocket. Point number six, social media is not real life. Now, I know that the digital world and social media are becoming more and more important every day, but they're still more and more important than real life or this car behind me. Now, I think social media is great for marketing or letting people know about a cause or information, but literally guys, you probably should try to remove the emotion from the internet because a lot of times people are just trying to lash out at somebody they view as more powerful than them. They're trying to punch up. Listen guys, I'm not gonna let somebody without an avatar, without a link LinkedIn page without a job that they probably ever worked in society bring me down and you shouldn't either. Ha! And fucking suck. His face is stupid. What? This dude just said I suck and my face is stupid? Hey yo f this dude, man. I'm mad. Uh, yeah, I hope it affected his life because I'm pretty unhappy with my own. I like the power it gives me. Number seven, consider getting therapy. I'm serious. I just wanted to make this point to let everybody know out there that it is not weird and it is not taboo to seek professional help for something. Listen, you seek professional help for your physical therapy, you know, oh my knee hurts or your leg hurts or your neck hurts. You're going to seek professional help for that. You're not just going to talk to your friends. So when it comes to your mental, professionals can help too. You know your friends, George and Michelle, listen, they're great to talk to and you should talk to them too. However. I wouldn't expect them to help solve all your problems. They're just not pros. Hey, no diss on the older generation, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot more things going on in our heads today than there was like in 1890. Point number eight, that thing you wanted to do, just go and do it, get it started. Ask somebody, go on Reddit, ping somebody. How do I get this started? And take the first step. Listen guys, forget about what your friends are gonna think. I see so many people be victim to the 30 people around them just because it wouldn't fit with the flow or the culture or whatever the normative behaviors of that friend group. If you wanna go do it, just do it. Sometimes you need to begin the process of something, realize 20% of the journey through that it's not for you, but that's okay because that's the concept of trial and error. But you cannot begin to even begin trial and error unless you start in the first place. I'm pretty glad we quit our jobs and pursued that rap career, man. Yeah, it's good to know that we are not the Asian Ray Schremer. No, but at least now when I go back to my job, which I am going back to, I'm gonna feel a lot better and shit, maybe I'll be better at it and get promoted. Yeah, it'll be because we pursued a failed rap career. Point number nine, sometimes the best helmet out there is the one you'll actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now this really applies to products of utility that a lot of people do not enjoy using. What's the best seatbelt? The one you're gonna put on. What's the best condom? The one you actually use. What's the best helmet? The one you actually put on when you ride out. In a day and age where there are a thousand options for everything and there are so many reviews and rankings and hierarchies for different products, sometimes for certain things, it's just gonna be the one that you actually use because it's an item where if you don't have it, the alternative is terrible. Yeah, I mean, I would wear a helmet when I ride my motorcycle, but I just haven't found one that looks cool, so um, for right now, I'm just going naked. What? I, well, then just get a cool one so you wear the helmet. Yeah, I'm not wearing any condoms until I get the premium ones, the ones that feel like nothing's there. I mean, you probably should be okay with the ones from the free clinic, but get the premium ones then. Number nine, be like water. Now, I know Bruce Lee said this before, and he's kind of famous for quoting it. Be formless, shapeless like water. One way I interpret this is to stay adaptive and flexible in your mind and body, meaning that there's gonna be circumstances and environments that you can't change, but you can always change your mindset. And water, H2O, has set molecular properties that are not going to change. When it gets hot, it turns into gas. When it gets cold, it turns into ice. And I think that people gotta have their set properties to go about life as well. At some point, you gotta decide on where you stand on things. You gotta have your own set properties. You gotta know your beliefs and your convictions because the environment around you is gonna change. That always sounded like to me some Kung Fu Confucius Bruce Lee mumbo jumbo. Dude, Billy Bob, trust me, it's a really good analogy. It just needs some interpretation. Number 11, 
actually follow some positive Instagram and TikTok accounts. Listen, I know all the memes are funny, the celebrities are interesting, the outfits are cool, the models are hot, and all the inequalities and sad news out there, it's valid. The internet is known to be very humorous, but very cynical. Out of all those accounts, make sure you just follow some positive ones, some ones that post really uplifting quotes or introspective stuff. You know, even if it is a little cheesy, it's just gonna build you up throughout the day. Even if you gotta listen to The Rock rap some really overly inspirational go get her macho raps. I mean, if that's what inspires you, then go do that. Dude, I only follow hot models I'll never meet, tours of $500 million mega yachts, and all the sad and terrible news that goes on around the world. Bro, that's like starting your day off eating a Krispy Kreme fried chicken sandwich and a full sugar monster energy drink. I get why you do it, but you're gonna kill yourself. Or 13, you'll never feel bad about throwing away something that's bad for you. What I mean by this is that humans are still creatures of convenience. Whatever's in front of us, we're gonna eat. So that's why you gotta keep good stuff around so you'll eat good stuff. If you keep bad stuff around, you'll eat bad stuff. But this is what I do when I get an urge for sweets. You know, those huh, high chews and those Arizona gummy snacks that you get at the bodega, those are really good, I love those. But when I buy them, I just eat like half the bag or I take a few bites and then I throw it away. And to me, that's not really food waste because that's already junk food, so I guess it's just, it's supposed to be junk anyways. Trust me, the law of diminishing returns applies to a lot of things in life. In fact, maybe everything. Each bite brings less and less enjoyment than the previous one. This hundredth bite tastes like failure. Number 14, listen to audiobooks. Now, listen guys, I know that everybody likes the idea of reading books. Everybody's seen those memes and those stats that your average millionaire reads over 20 plus books a year. But let's be honest, a lot of people purchase books, but don't finish them. Statistically speaking, you are much more likely to finish a book if you use the audiobook format. Plus, you can listen at 1.5x. Personally, for me, I'm used to listening to content at like 2x. So I was able to finish The Loneliest Americans by Jay Casme and King in about four hours. If I read that, it would have took me almost eight. You know, I don't really know if I want to do audiobooks. It doesn't make me feel less intelligent. So if you have to read the paperback on your nightstand, what's the likelihood you're actually going to finish it? Number 15, drink more water. Hot water, warm water, cold water, room temperature water. Just drink more H2O. Listen, guys, I don't think that Starbucks refreshers or Diet Coke counts. You got to drink water, whether it's sparkling still. Dude, I'm so hungover. I heard that if I have a beer in the morning, I'll just get really drunk and the hangover will go away. Well, even though the beer is a liquid, your brain is actually dried out from the alcohol, so... Number 15, first impressions still matter even in a digital world. As we mentioned, the world is getting more digital, right? It's moving towards Web 3.0, the metaverse, more people are living their life online, but even though the technology is there, human connection is still king for now. So first impressions and how you present yourself to people still really matters. You know all that general social etiquette, looking people in the eye, saying thank you, being respectful, listening more than you're talking, especially when you're meeting new people, all that old Dale Carnegie stuff about the seven habits of success with people i know it seems old but we didn't evolve that quickly it's only been like a hundred years hey i'm thinking about taking my hypercritical super trolly and very annoying personality that's online to the offline world you know real life what do you think wait why would you want to do that well i actually just use my anonymous platform to protect my trauma onto other people that i haven't really taken the hard work to work on you know and i'm just kind of releasing online yeah man that's pretty human of you but that's also just the most like no sauce, just cheese and meat hamburger way of thinking. Uh, yeah, I'm a dollar cheeseburger. Number 16, look up tailored advice on YouTube, Reddit, and Quora, but don't get caught in the fray. And I know that TikTok has all the engagement right now and it's a great place for sparking thoughts, but in terms of raw information, it's still on YouTube, Reddit, and Quora. However, guys, there is a lot of fray out there and a lot of things you can get distracted by. Just look for your answer, get in and get out. YouTube is more long form and you're gonna find everything from like professors, leaders of industry, to just like amateur armchair experts doing long form content that's very expository on YouTube. For me, for example, I'm really into e-mobility. I'm into electric scooters. I can message somebody in France on Reddit, ask them what the review of this unique rare scooter is, and they're gonna get back to me. For example, on YouTube, there are so many different channels doing really 
organized, deep dives into electric scooters, that's something you can't find on TikTok. Yeah, I found a bunch of incredibly interesting but controversial topics on TikTok, but there's no depth or end of the discussion. People are just yelling at each other. Yeah, I mean, TikTok's great because it's a bunch of really opinionated regular people, but at some point, you're gonna need to hear something on this topic from somebody who doesn't also do the outfit challenges and dances. Number 17, do not be afraid of skipping the small talk. Life is too short to not have DMCs with people deep, meaningful conversations. I never regretted a DMC, even with somebody I disagreed with, or even someone that I didn't really fully like, or even someone that I knew I was not going to see again. Yeah, that was a really deep conversation just now. You know, I mean, I can tell that my heart and my brain are much more better and open for having that, and I probably learned a lot more than just having a surface level conversation about sports or the weather. Think about it this way, in conversations moving forward, you could be the killer of the filler. Number 18, be like bamboo, especially when you're setting up the barriers for your interpersonal relationships. Sometimes people in life like to oversimplify things and they're thinking with my friends and my family, should I be hard, should I be soft? You should probably be neither. You should be firm, strong, but slightly flexible, just like bamboo. For example, when it comes to a friend that might be trying to take up too much of your time, sometimes if you're like tofu or cheese that's too soft, right, they're gonna run right through your barriers. And if you're like steel, it's too cold and it's too hard, and when they hit it, they might get hurt or they might be mad at you. If you're bamboo, you're gonna be firm and solid, but still have enough flex that they're not hurt. Don't worry, Chinese bamboo is very strong. Ah. Number 19, make sure you break a sweat from exercise at least three times a week. I know that this might sound basic, but if the pandemic has taught us anything, it's two things. One, the more healthy and more fit you are, the better your body is in a position to fight sickness. And two, home workouts really work. Think about your body as a car, but you only get one car. Wouldn't you wanna keep that car in good shape? Find a routine that works for you. Make it convenient, make it fun. There are so many different ways to work out nowadays. It just takes a quick Google search and you'll find it. And you don't have to do anything crazy like CrossFit or even running half marathons or even doing high intensity workouts. Literally, it could be something like push-ups or jogging or playing ping pong. Hey, you think if I play ping pong for an hour, it's a pretty good workout? Those pro players look pretty fit. Hell yeah, and especially if that's the only way you like to exercise, then do that. Number 20, appreciate where you're at. I saw this quote on Instagram that said, I stopped searching for happiness. I just try to appreciate the moment that I'm in and happiness came and found me. I think it's really easy for people who are ambitious or have big goals to constantly be looking at the next thing and constantly looking above them. They break into a new plateau or a new tier. I understand that because that is a motivational tool, the carrot stick, but at some point you also have to just look at where you're at, how far you've come and appreciate that. Of course, in a cold world, people just kind of look at it like a global metric ranking system, right? But really to yourself, when you look in the mirror, you have to understand where you came from and how far you've come and really look at that range as being the most important. Number 21, don't be afraid to help somebody if you have the right information, even if they didn't ask. I get it, it might feel intrusive sometimes if you try to recommend something to somebody even if they didn't ask for your help. But guess what, if you got the right information, it's really not that bad. I started saying things like, hey, have you ever thought about, or hey man, I know you didn't ask me, but what about this? So for example, I was playing basketball the other day with this kind of big bulky guy who kept talking about how he was getting injured and his foot was hurting because he wasn't getting enough support from his sneakers and there were some low top Kobe's. Now I had never met him before, but all I did was say, hey man, have you ever thought about getting LeBron's? They're higher cut, they're more supportive and overall built for bulkier guys. If you come at it respectfully, why would it be ever offensive to suggest something to someone else. This is how we get better as a community and as an overall world. Especially coming from what is considered an introverted Asian immigrant community. I mean, people don't communicate enough. There's a lot of smart and educated people out there, but they're afraid to help somebody because it feels rude. But it's not rude. Why would it be ever rude? Just don't come at it in a rude way. Number 22, you do not have to make sure that every single piece of content you put out to the world is entertaining. Nowadays with social media and an attention economy, everybody feels so much pressure to share their gifts in every single post, whether that's writing witty captions, being beautiful, being bold and doing pranks or messing with society, or people feel the pressure to showcase all those things in every single post to make sure that they get the likes and it's tracking on the algorithm. But listen guys, sometimes you just gotta say something to get it off your chest, or you have a message to say to the world, or sometimes you don't want to put on your makeup 
just go and do that. I truly believe that we are on this earth to be free. Now, freedom means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but to me, sometimes that means you're free to put expectations on yourself and obligations, and sometimes you are free not to. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that video of 22 things you wanna know going into 2022. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. I'm sure some of these points you knew, some of these points you didn't know or maybe hadn't thought of before, and some of these points you just need to share with somebody in your life that has no idea. Maybe you do them, but you're just too scared to tell somebody that they don't do them, so it's all good. We'll do that. Send them this video. Make sure you share, and until next time, you guys, we out. Peace.